It is Fibonacci FAP February. Um, in mathematics, this is coming from Wikipedia. In mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers, f of zero, and then it goes on, right? And we'll just fill this in. f of one is one. Chat, say it along. Blake, say it along with me. You know, you know what it is, right? f of seven is, is uh, 13. 13. f of 29 would be 317,811. So on the first day, you fap once. On the second day, you fap f of two, which is also one. On the third day, two, twice. Fourth day, f of four, sum of the preceding numbers, three. By the 29th Fibonacci sequence number, it would be 317,811. So on the 29th day of Fibonacci FAP February, you would have to FAP 317,811 times. Test of strength of mental fortitude mainly. Many people died. How far do you think you can get in Fibonacci FAP February? I mean, realistically, Third F three, that's that's as much as really? that's as much as your boy. Two twice. That's it, dude. I don't have the energy like I did when I was younger, man. Like you wake up. Let, let's say you start your day early, eight a.m. Dude, it's it starts to hurt after a while, mate. I could probably get here if I if I really if I really try. I'm not gonna say it's easy. Oh wait, what day is it? It's February third. <laughs> Welcome to class. My name is Professor Lando, and today we're talking about something very important. Riz. Valentine's Day is here, and you know, a, a sort of special day for some, but perhaps a difficult one for others. From the looks of you all, maybe you are lacking in Riz here. You may be asking, well, Professor, wh what does it matter? Well, Valentine's Day is here. And Blake, do you have a Valentine's? Uh, I, no, I, I, I don't, unfortunately. It's been a while? It's, it's a year or two, you give or take, you know? Yeah, it's been yeah. a little bit. All right. Do you have Riz, though? Uh, maybe, maybe okay. a little. Well, let's find yeah. out. Let's find out. Well, students, what is Riz? Uh, well, from dictionary.com, Riz is a slang term for skill in charming or seducing a potential romantic partner, especially through verbal communication. It is most commonly applied in the context of men pursuing women, but not always. It is typically used in the same exact way as the older slang term known as game. Confidence, I think, is, is the word we always often hear when associating with Riz. When you say people like, oh, this person has Riz, what does that mean? What, what, what key trait about them comes across to you? And it's, well, confidence. Pretty simple, wouldn't you say? But unfortunately, when it comes to acquiring a partner, a romantic partner, especially on this Valentine's Day, there's going to be some additional characteristics, additional things to keep in mind. But we're starting off with this as our foundation. Let's take a look at these other characteristics. So what we have here is a ruler. In investigating how to get a girlfriend, um, it, it's about, you know, we, we can look inwardly a lot and say, well, I have Riz, you have Riz, I am charming, I have confidence. Well, it's not always about you. Maybe it's about the other. In this case, in Blake's case for this hypothetical, a girl, a potential girlfriend. Well, why don't we take a look at what they're interested in, what's important to them, because that's the most important thing about a relationship. It's a give and take. Let's center it. I have marks here, and this is, this is inches. We're talking about penis length here. <laughs> Make, yeah, makes sense, yeah. Right, right. So we have here inches, right? One inch, two inch, three inch, four, five inch, six inch, seven inch more. You know, I'm a, I'm a professor. I have a platform to reach many people, and I want to use this opportunity to dispel a lot of myths, okay, to give you the hard truth here, the facts. What do girls and guys like? I'm telling you now, in the middle, about six inches, all right? Six inches, and this, from six inches on, this is just way too big. It's absurd. And we've done the peer-reviewed science, right? We had a sample size of about one. And we did find that actually, 
Three was the average desirable length right here. The four, five inch zone, that's the Goldilocks zone, right? So just to you know, dispel any rumors or myths, misinformation, especially in the cyber age nowadays, um, I did want to make it clear that, uh, because there's a lot of confidence issues. We talk about Riz, we talk about the keyword confidence. Um, we don't want people getting in their own head about things, right? We don't want them to be thinking, because I hear that a lot, the sentiment from people, oh, I'm, I'm self-conscious about the size of my hands, right? I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. And, and it reflects inwardly and it compounds and you start to lose your confidence, lose your what? Your riz. Exactly. So I just want to make that clear. If you're three and below, I, I might suggest um, becoming a bottom. When you're wearing a chastity cage, it doesn't matter how big you are, right? Don't believe what girls, listen, they're, the 2.5% of you that watch my channel, listen, girls, don't believe what you hear on, on the internet and what you see, all right? Why do you think they make these expo markers this size? They could easily make them bigger and they could easily make them smaller. It's because they want, you know, they know this is going to be in people's hands, right? People are going to use these to, to write. They need to make it the most appropriate, natural size for, to be in someone's grasp. It's natural. Any smaller, and it's like, oh, it's too awkward to hold. Any bigger, it's the same thing. They, they looked at this marker size, and they were like, that's the perfect size to, to grasp. It fits so smooth. You can, you, you know, you could go like this, you know, or, or you can, you know, maybe pinky up, or you can hit them with the pencil grip like this, or, you know, or, you know, it, it's big enough to where you can do two hands, you go like this maybe. Like, right? I'm, I'm learning a lot today, Professor. I'll, I'll tell you that. Let's talk about gooning. Blake, have you ever heard this term, gooning? Uh, I have not. Uh, maybe to mess around? Maybe that's what that means? Uh, I mess around in a sense. Okay. Not to be mistaken with a goon, which is a lowly henchman in like a cartoon, like a goon, right? Let's not, let's make sure we keep that separate. Gooning in our context for the class is very different from being a goon. A goon is you're like a guy that goes like this and goes hmm, 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 hmm. I mean, he could be gooning. They're not mutually exclusive to one another. A goon could also be gooning, but they are separate entities. Um, to talk about gooning, we should first talk about, what is this? Uh, edging. Do you know what edging is? Uh, stand over. I know, I, I know you know, you yeah. don't have to tell me. Edging, the physical act where someone brings themselves close to completion in a self-arousing act, but does not reach completion. They try to keep up the arousal for as long as possible without actually reaching completion. And this is done in a sort of self-pleasuring way. Why do we talk about edging and what does it have to do with gooning? Well, um, I want to note that the act of edging, this act of pleasure denial is not to be confused with a roundabout act of purity or abstinence, right? You could say, oh, they're denying themselves, they're being pure. No, it's the exact opposite because edging is in fact an explicit act of self-pleasure and would not help someone achieve, uh, like for example, they wouldn't be able to become a wizard, right? Like uh, being a virgin and abstinence would. So how is this related? Gooning takes this a step further than just a physical act. Gooning is a lifestyle. So while edging is just the physical act, gooning is the lifestyle where, like I, like I said, where someone edges themselves in an overly indulgent, obsessive way. Gooners, those who partake in gooning, often spend hours upon hours in the act, often wasting time and not accomplishing anything else. I think self-pleasure is okay. It is a natural desire, and uh, when done in moderation, can be a part of a balanced and positive lifestyle, especially if you're like a teacher. I think it fits right in. Um, I think the difference here, though, is that gooning is almost an uncontrollable, unrestricted act. It's the way that it becomes an obsessive thing, wasting hours upon hours. 
jerking it, essentially. Caveat here, uh, let's every, like, like many things, gooning, there's nuance, right? It should be noted that gooners, those who partake in gooning, are consumers, right? Their explicit adult act here, it's simply to the goal of pleasuring themselves in the consumption of adult media. It might be disingenuous to imply that people who work in the industry, such as not safe for work artists, for example, as gooners or those who are gooning, since these people are living mainly markedly productive lifestyles, or at least act in a way that implies some sort of work aspiration, be it creatively or monetarily. The Goon Cave. It's a setup inside of a room, like a desk setup, or perhaps it's on their bed or something. It's some sort of setup in a room belonging to a gooner that is meant to optimize their gooning experience. This is usually done with as many monitors within the person's purview eyesight in order to have as much not safe for work media playing as possible. And I'll draw this example visually. I'll draw a POV. So this is an example of, of a goon cave, like a POV shot. Like imagine you're sitting there in your chair and at your computer desk, you have three monitors right? Maybe a laptop in your lap, maybe a phone. And on each one of these monitors, you have some sort of explicit media playing. So you're trying to like immerse yourself. You're trying to, it's, it's just, you're trying to like oversensitize yourself, oh. bombard yourself with as much material as possible, right? I get and that's the difference between like just a healthy, like I mean, done, you know, maybe you could be a little on the longer side, whatever. You're having a good day, right? Yeah. Got a good grade on your test or something. Like, I'm going to treat myself. Mm, yeah. But this is like, you're sitting here for hours going, ah, oh. like you're, you're, just, you're just getting like bombarded. I think that the highest level goon cave is actually the Las Vegas sphere. Ultra high resolution, 360 purview. Imagine, imagine what you can put up on that screen and you're just there in the center of it like this, and you just, you just, it, it's the ultimate gooning experience. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break into the Las Vegas sphere. I'm gonna load up the Overwatch SFMs, put it on there, and I, they're gonna leave me in there, right? And I'm gonna burst out the top like Mothra. I, I'm my, in my coon cocoon, I'd be like Psh! And they consider it like, it's not just, it's not just jerking it to them. Like it's an experience, there's a whole Reddit r slash, I think it's Goon Caves or something, where they're like, check out my setup. Like they're showing people their cars or something. Check out my setup. And people are like, nice, Goon Cave. I, 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 I went there in, in research for this. I'm such a pure person. I didn't know what gooning was. My chat, you sickos, I was streaming, twitch.tv, by the way. And I, they were like, gooning. I was like, what's gooning? They had to teach me because I'm just so pure of heart and mind and soul. You think, what do you think about this? Is this too much? Uh, I mean, now that you put it out in the world, I didn't even know this existed. And, and, and honestly, it's like, I always like to try things once, right? So, <laughs> so maybe. Do you have enough monitors? <laughs> no, dude. I, I might need to borrow some from you. <laughs> you can keep them, bro. You, I don't need them back. Uh, in, in, in light of Valentine's Day and wanting to pursue uh, a, a partner here, we have a surprise for you, Blake. What do you, what do you have? What do you got for me? We have someone here for you to date. No way. Okay. You're gonna go on a date here, uh, an experiment for everyone here to learn something, to apply the things that you learned and see if you in fact have Riz. Are you ready, Blake? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm confident. I feel good. I feel good about this. Okay, we are going to go get your date. Okay. All right, Blake, we got us. We got a special date for you. What do you, who do you, who do you got? Who do you got, Professor? Right Hello, here. everyone. I, I'm Professor Linda. I heard that you guys were doing a lecture on Riz. I dropped my ruler. How silly of me. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, Professor Lando asked me to uh, come and teach you guys a thing or two. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. And I heard there was... I heard there was a, a, a little boy that was uh, needing some dating experience. Oh my god! What? 
You are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. That that's wow. that, that's a really nice thing to say. You, you look you look fantastic. Like ten out of ten. Like unbelievable. I didn't plan this far ahead. You wanna you wanna maybe have our date? Yeah, yeah. we should have our date. Why, I, Blake, what do you think? Dude, realistically, absolutely, dude. You you look great, dude. <laughs> you look you look real. <laughs> You look fucking good, dude. Cheers. Happy Valentine's Day, Blake. Happy Valentine's Day, Linda. The 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 oh, the thing I like about you the most is probably your choker. That, you like that, dude. The chokers, okay. those 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 go me. I go crazy over here. Okay, the yeah. yeah. The yeah, chokers I think so. really nice. All right, all right, classmates, don't let me down. Let's see how. Oh, I I think Blake has some uh, pickup lines that you guys submitted. Um, I think Professor Orlando asked for Let's see. Uh, your best pickup lines in a tweet. Rohan, I believe, is the name. Uh, are you Google? Because uh, you're everything I'm searching for. Okay. Okay, that, that's a good one. That's a solid one. Zenith Xander, shout out to you. Did it hurt when you fell from a vending machine? Because, baby, you're a snack. <laughs> oh, that's the best one. That's the good one. Best one yet. <laughs> so good. Okay, this one's okay, Oscar. Shout out to Oscar. A diamond was the hardest object on earth until I saw you. <laughs> okay, a little risky. Yeah, a little risky. A little risky, but if they're down to clown like that, might be a little... Are you a beaver? Because damn! <laughs> So why don't you open that up for yeah. me? And why, why don't you feed me one of my favorite chocolates? You've been doing well, I would say. I think mainly is you show an eagerness to be present. Even if your jokes don't land, even if you're not dressed the best, you show an initiative, you show an interest. Like, oh, here, let me get that for you. I, here, here's a gift I got you. You show, I think that's what's important, is yeah. you show an effort. A lot of it is just like the, the thought that matters, mm -hmm. right? It's your intentions, and uh, I feel like as long as you have good intentions, Things should hopefully play out the way you want. This is this is a romantic, right? Oh, 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 oh. That's why you guys are the best classmates on, on this earth. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Thank you so much to our Patreon supporters and a special shout out to the students shown here in detention. Check out my Patreon page for bonus content like extended footage, art, and behind the scenes updates. Thanks again.